welcome to a new episode of Bite Sized Book History. I'm your host, Allie Alvis. I'm a special collections librarian and book historian. Some of you may know me better as my social media handle, at Book Historia. Today I'm going to talk to you about metal type and do some myth busting along the way. So everyone knows in 1450, Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press, right? No, that's not quite right on a couple of fronts. The screw press as a mechanism was present in the West starting in ancient times. Pliny the Elder actually wrote about it in his Chronicles. It was used throughout the centuries for a variety of purposes, including as a wine press and as a press for printing patterns on clothing. Gutenberg did alter the mechanism of the press somewhat to apply a more even pressure, but that's about where his interaction with the press mechanism stopped. Gutenberg's true invention was movable metal type, right? Well, again, not quite. The Chinese were actually using movable bronze type in the 12th century. Before that, they used movable ceramic and wood type in the 11th century. This technology spread throughout Asia with the spread of the Mongol Empire. The earliest surviving book printed with metal type is the Korean Chikchi, printed in 1377. Chikchi is the abbreviated title of a Korean work of Zen Buddhist teachings. Unfortunately, widespread use of metal type in Korea was stymied by government restrictions on its use for only official government publications. There's no evidence to suggest whether or not Gutenberg knew of these Asian advances before he started his work, but he was certainly one of the first, if not the first, to use movable metal type in the West. Gutenberg's most important contribution to the technology of printing was the technique used to cast individual pieces of type. Trained as a goldsmith, he was familiar with a variety of metal casting techniques. So, how do you cast an individual piece of type? The first step is to carve the letter backwards onto a small steel rod called a punch. The punch would then be punched into a softer metal called a matrix. I have a couple of matrices in my collection. As you can see, they're the right way around. These would have been used as the base for a mold, with which you could cast individual pieces of type over and over and over again. This was far more efficient than individually carving each piece of type, which could be thousands and thousands of letters and symbols to make a complete book. Now, once you have your pieces of type, it's time to set your page backwards and letter by individual letter. This was a very time consuming process and very fine work. Pieces of type were sorted into little compartments within larger cases, with the capital letters occupying the upper case. That is where the expression comes from. The letters would then be arranged onto a compositing stick and eventually all put together to make a page. I do have a page of set type here. It is very heavy. So I will show it to you carefully. You can see all of these little letters were individually set by hand. It's very important to be very exact in this work because if you make a mistake, you have to stop the presses. Obviously, to go through the printing process, the page would need to be set in something a bit stronger than that little cardboard frame I had made. Proper setting involves a frame called a chase and a variety of wooden wedges and sticks to make sure that it is absolutely secure. As you may expect, typesetters weren't always perfect. The expression mind your P's and Q's actually comes from typesetting, and even the Gutenberg Bible had typos. But one historic example of a typo is a bit more salacious than others. In 1631, the so-called Wicked Bible was printed, in which some unlucky typesetter left out the word not from a critical commandment. So it read, thou shalt commit adultery. Generally, metal type was for printing in a single color. Although you could print in two or three colors with metal type, it was a time consuming and very exacting process. You had to be perfect in the way that you set your, for example, red bits versus your blue bit. I have here, two pieces of an American flag ornament, one made for red and one made for blue. I tried to use these to print a true to color American flag by hand. 
uh, obviously not using the same techniques or a press at all as a real printer, I did finally get it kind of right, so maybe I could be a printer after all. Later technological advances made it possible to cast whole lines of type at the same time. One of these technologies was the aptly named linotype. Movable metal type is still used today by what we call letterpress printers. One such letterpress printer is the star-shaped press located in Chicago. They make incredible pieces of art using not only type as it was meant to be formed as words, but also to make into shapes and cityscapes and animals, and it's the most incredible thing. They're just one example of how people are putting their own modern spin on this classic art. And if you too are putting your own modern spin on this classic art, if you're a type enthusiast or a letterpress printer or an artist who uses this in their work, drop a comment below. It's always interesting to see how people are making this sort of thing their own. Thank you again for coming along with me on this episode of Bite Size Book History. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting bibliographical videos. And just a reminder, don't bite your books. See you next time. Mm -hmm.